Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a numerical expression. We have 1 plus 2009 to the fourth power plus 2010 to the fourth power divided by 1 plus 2009 squared plus 2010 squared. So this problem, if this appeared on a math contest, it probably did in the year 2009 or 2010. And obviously, you can change the years around and you'll get a new problem. But the idea will be the same. Because I'm going to use substitution and replace 2009, which is the smaller number, with something like x. Any variable is fine, but I want to use x today. x equals 2009. Let's write it down. And now, I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first method. So when I basically replace x with 2009, I'm getting 1 plus x to the fourth because 2009 is equivalent to x. Plus, and 2010 is 1 more than 2009, isn't it? So it's going to be x plus 1 raised to the fourth power. That's our numerator. And denominator is pretty much the same thing but with squares. So kind of have a pattern like this. I'm thinking there might be a third method to which you'll hopefully let me know. So here's what I'm going to do with this. Expand everything, right? Let's uh, expand first and then we'll try to simplify. 1 plus x to the fourth plus x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1. Remember uh, binomial theorem, Pascal's triangle. And then 1 plus x squared plus x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now, if you simplify the numerator and the denominator, you're going to get 2x to the fourth, right? And then you're going to be getting 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 2 divided by 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. Yay! 2 is a common factor for both the numerator and the denominator. So let's divide both of these by 2 we get x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 all over x squared plus x plus 1. Awesome. There is a really nice pattern here. Hopefully you do see that. If you look at the numerator, you kind of see a symmetrical equation. So I'm thinking after maybe I introduce the first method, we can talk about it, try to come back here and look at it from a different perspective. But here's what I can do. First method is supposed to be kind of painful, right? Well, not too bad. We can use long division or synthetic division. Long division might take a while, but here's how it's done. You kind of put the, well, at least in the United States, that's how you do it. You put the divisor on the left and the dividend on the right. Dividend, such an interesting word. Uh, we have the divisor and then the quotient and the remainder. Okay. Now, of course, we expect to get zero remainder here because we want them to be evenly divisible. Okay. So, how do you divide x squared uh, plus x plus 1 into that quartic polynomial? So, here's what you check first. How many times x squared goes into x to the fourth power? Those are the leading coefficients or what is that called? Leading terms, whatever. Um, the highest powers. It's going to be x squared times. And then the next step is going to be distribute and multiply. You're going to get x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared. And then you're supposed to negate and add, which means subtraction. These are going to cancel out x cubed plus 2x squared. And then bring down the 2x. And now x squared goes into x cubed. How many times? x times. So we're going to add plus x. And then multiply and distribute like before x cubed plus x squared plus x. And now, again, we're going to negate the second one, minus, minus, and minus, and add. These two are going to cancel out. 2x squared minus x squared is x squared, and it's going to give us x. And finally, bring down the 1, and you're going to get this. And notice, x squared plus x plus 1 goes into itself one time. And that's going to give you the exact same thing. Therefore, when you subtract, you're going to get a remainder of 0. You're adding the opposite, which is equivalent to subtraction, right? Uh-oh, what is going on? Notability. Okay, so the remainder is 0, which is good. 
and the quotient is the answer, which is x squared plus x plus 1. Uh-oh, it's the same as the denominator. Is that a surprise? It shouldn't be. But let's go ahead and take a look at this equation from another perspective, which you can use call the third method, but, but I'm going to introduce that before the second method, okay? Whatever you want to call this. Extra, okay. So here's what I'm thinking, and I haven't tested it, so this may or may not work. But after I got to this point, I'm kind of thinking, since the numerator is a symmetrical polynomial, couldn't I ju just divide it, uh, everything by x squared? So that would give me x squared plus 2x plus 3 plus 2 over x plus 1 over x squared. And then, of course, we're going to do the same thing at the bottom. If you divide by x squared, you're going to get 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. And then from here, I'm going to get x squared plus 1 over x squared. And then I can kind of put those two together. And then plus 2 times x plus 1 over x plus 3. And at the bottom, I should be getting 1. Oh, 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 over x squared, right? Here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to call this something. How about y? Let's call this y. And then this becomes y squared minus 2. Because if you square y, you're going to get an extra 2 there. So this looks like y squared minus 2 plus 2y plus 3 divided by. Now what does this become? That's going to be an interesting one, right? Because there is no x. Uh-oh, that's not very good. So maybe this method is, is not going to work. I don't know, but I just at least tried. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And the second method is we're going to take the numerator, that, because that's what we need to work on. And we're, and we're going to write it as follows. I want to separate x squared from here and then x from here. So I can kind of add x squared plus x plus 1 on the side because that's my denominator. Remember that? Okay, ready? Now, we, we're going to kind of split this expression into pieces, but we're going to do it in a smart way. So we're going to put these two together and factor x out, x cubed plus 1. And then these two are going to give me 2x squared times x plus 1. And then the rest we can write later. But this is uh, sum of two cubes, right? So I can kind of write it as x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. And this is just 2x squared times x plus 1. I'm unloading this part first. Now x plus 1 is a common factor. Factor it out. And then I'm getting x cubed minus x squared plus x plus 2x squared. And that becomes x plus 1 times x cubed plus x squared plus x. Nice. Now we can take out an x. And this will be x squared plus x plus 1. And I'm now I'm ready to add the last piece, which is this one, which is 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. And guess what? We got a common factor. Yay! We can now take it out. And the other factor is formed by the product x times x plus 1, which is x squared plus x, and then plus 1. And yay! This is what I got. So my expression becomes this. In other words, this squared divided by the same thing, and you can simplify this very easily, and the answer would be x squared plus x plus 1 again. Make sense? I hope it does, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.